Hello and welcome back to the Accessible PDF video series. My name is Josh Seifert. I am the Information and Communication Technology Accessibility Program Manager here at the University of Oregon. This video discusses how to make accessible forms within your PDFs. This is a little bit more complicated than the other videos in this series, so if you haven't already watched the previous videos, go do that first. Okay, so if you're still with me, let's get going. I have here a file. I created it in Microsoft Word, and then I exported it to a PDF. And it's not a real form. It's just a fake form, a demo that I made for someone to hypothetically sign up for some U of O athletics marketing emails. It has all the standard contact information. These are all regular text input fields. It has some radio buttons, and then it has a few checkboxes. It's supposed to represent the normal stuff you'd see in most forms. It does not currently have any interactive form fields. Now you can create interactive form fields in Microsoft Word, but I didn't because first, Word forms are inaccessible, don't use them, and second, when you export these files to PDFs, that interactive Word form data, it doesn't get exported anyway. You can and should use Word to lay out your form. So this has, I think, a pretty good visual layout. I'm not a graphic designer, but I think it looks pretty good. In a real form, you'd probably have more than four different sports, but I'm trying to keep it brief because having a longer form, it wouldn't show you anything different. It would just be more tedious doing the same step more times. So let's talk about how to make the form uh, accessible. The first thing I'm going to do is delete the tags. Now, this might be a surprise to you if you've watched the other videos on accessible PDFs. You recalled me saying the tags are the, uh, the foundation of an accessible document. However, when you create form fields, you need to uh, then retag your whole document, which will mess up any tags that you already have, um, already have here. So if you went through all the work of making your tags perfect, then added form fields, it would just overwrite all that work. So I and most people think it makes sense to just delete all the tags, start with a clean slate, and then we can add tags after the form is already set up. So to do that, here I am in the Tags pane. Uh, whoops, I just closed it. Right-click on the root node and then select Delete Tag. And boom, we have, we have no more tags. Close that, and then on the right-hand toolbar, choose the Prepare Form option. If you do not have Prepare Form available, just search in the Search Tools search bar for Prepare Form. Click on this, and it asks you which file you want to work on. It defaults to the currently open file, so that's good. Uh, pro tip, don't ever check this document requires signatures. Even if your document does require signatures, there is a known bug in Acrobat where if this is checked, it disables certain form fill properties that you will need to use. So leave this unchecked. Um, you do want to leave form fill auto detection on and let's click start to run this tool. Oh yeah, I, I deleted the tags. That was a change to my document. So it's gonna ask that I save it first which is a good idea. You should save this document frequently when you work on it because Acrobat is notoriously unstable when you're working with forms and it's super frustrating if you work on something for like an hour, it crashes and you lose your work. Okay, so uh, the tool ran and now we see our form fields. So we see all these blue boxes. This is These are the form fields that Acrobat created for us. Like any automated tool, uh, Acrobat's form fill tool is imperfect, so the first thing we need to do is go through this whole form and make sure that the fields are correct, that all the fields that need to be there are there, and that there's no extra fields that shouldn't be there. So starting at the top, uh, all my contact information, these look like regular text input fields, which is good. It looks like my, my radio buttons are, are good. And actually the check boxes, I have no idea what's going on here. Um, I see the check boxes and I see all these other fields were added and these are not correct. Actually, I do know what's going on here. So Acrobat, it, you know, it looks at specific things to guess where form field should go. And one of the things it looks for is, hey, is there a text label on the left and then a big blank spot to the right? That probably means it's a text input field here. And so that's what it's doing here. So I, I kind of get it. I don't know why it thought it applied to all these lines and not uh, men's basketball, but who knows? So to delete this, just uh, select it, then hit the delete key on your keyboard, or you can right click, control click to open up uh, these options and then choose delete. Delete these two as well. Okay. Oh, and here's the other confirmation button. That's also a checkbox. That also looks correct. So uh, it looks actually like 
Acrobat correctly identified all the form fields. It didn't, it didn't miss any that should be there. So I'm going to uh, delete one that is correct. And it's just to show you how to manually add form items. When you have the prepare tool open, it adds this, um, this toolbar at the top. And this is where you can choose form fields to manually add. The ones that you'll use most often are standard text input, checkboxes, and radios, radio buttons. So name should be a text input. So I'm going to select that one. And then you just drop it wherever it should go. OK, you can resize it. I'm going to resize it so it fits the full uh, visual text field. And that's all we have to do to add fields. Now we need to verify that they are accurate. So to do that, you can either double click on your field or right click and select properties. Uh, I'm actually going to do a different one first. I'm going to choose street address first. The two fields that you will need, uh, the two fields you'll need to verify for every form input are the name and the tooltip. The name field. This is, it's not visible on the screen. It's not read by screen readers. This is just how Acrobat refers to this form input internally. If you look here on the sidebar, you'll see all these different form fields. This is just, um, the, this shows the form field name. So this can be anything you want. Just make sure it's something logical. So if you're looking at uh, a layout like this, you know which form field is being uh, referenced. Street address, that makes sense. Now, tooltip, this is what actually gets read by screen readers. And both the name and the tooltip, Acrobat will just grab whatever the adjacent visual label is and, and make that both the name and the, and the tooltip. And that might be fine. And it, it might need a little bit more clarification. I think street address, yeah, that, that's probably clear to someone who was using a screen reader. If they heard that this is a form field for a screen reader, they'd, they'd know what to do. Um, so I'm not going to change anything here. Uh, if you want to uh, revise a, a different field, you can either close this window and then double click or right click properties. Or if you leave this, this dialog box open, you can just click on another field and it will automatically jump to it. Not crucial, just saves you a few clicks. Now I'm back on the name field. And because I created this manually, because I didn't use Acrobat's built-in tool, it didn't, uh, it didn't pre-fill these values. It gave this a default name of text 16. Um, this is a little bit confusing. I apologize. But because the, uh, this is the field for someone entering their name, the value for the name field is name. Um, Tooltip, I would be a little bit more verbose than just name especially if you had a form where you had more than one person's name, right? Like say it's a, it's a reference list for a job application. They might ask for, you know, the name of reference one, reference two, reference three. So just having the value name wouldn't be uh, sufficiently descriptive. Uh, here I'll say, you know, enter your full name. So you know to enter both your first and last name because some forms will have, you know, first name and last name in separate fields. Uh, I'm also going to say required because because it is required. You see it has that red asterisk here, name, email address, UO affiliation. These are all flagged as required. I have my little legend here saying red asterisk indicates a required field. And I'm going to, uh, yeah, so type out required in the tooltip so the screen reader reads it out. Now, there is a required checkbox here, and you should check it. This is what actually mandates the field being required in Acrobat. Unfortunately, some screen readers don't actually read this out. So that's why it's good to be um, redundant and uh, explicitly state this is required in the tooltip. OK, that's all I need to do for name. Oh, and it also changes it to red when you flag it as required. Date of birth. Um, this is also a standard text input, but date of birth, it might have some specific data formatting requirements, right? You don't want people to enter their date of birth in a thousand different formats. So under the format tab, you have formatting options. Select format category in this drop down. This is a date, so let's choose date. And then you have a variety of, of options. I am partial to month, month, day, day, year, 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 year. So I'm going to choose that. And actually, now that I choose that, I'm going to go back to my tooltip and include that in, in the tooltip. Because especially if you rely on assistive technologies, fixing errors can be a bigger pain. Um, so it's always good to uh, prevent errors rather than, you know, um, yeah, preventing errors is better than, you know, 
popping up error messages so people know to fix it. Phone, oops, I moved that box a little bit. Phone, I don't think that requires any additional formatting. City, also good. State, in the tooltip, I might uh, specify they should add the two-letter abbreviation. I can visually see that this is a very small field, so I would infer that you don't want the full state name. But if you don't see that visually, having that spelled out specifically would be helpful. Say two-letter state abbreviation. Zip code, I think that'll be fine. Yeah, email address, that's fine. No, it's not. It's required. So add the word required in here and check that box. And that's all we need to do for the standard text input fields. For the radio buttons, actually, I'm going to go ahead and delete these just so I can create them all manually because radio buttons are a little bit more complicated than standard text input fields. Choose the radio button. It's the icon that looks like a bullseye. And like the text field, just drag it and drop it where it should go. Radio buttons are different because they are grouped. The idea of a radio button is you have multiple options and you need to choose exactly one of them. So these questions have the concept of a group name. The group name is the same as the name of a, of a standard input, except it'll apply. It'll be exactly the same for all members in the group. So this group name is only referred to internally by Acrobat. Um, so it can be whatever you want as long as it's logical. I will call this UO affiliation and flag it as required because it is required. Then the radio button choice is the actual uh, value for that choice. So this one will be I am a current or former student, staff or faculty member at UO. Okay, it says we need more buttons. So let's go ahead and add a radio button for the second option. It automatically populates with the group name. I'm a parent of a current or former student at UO. And I'm going to intentionally click away just in case you, you miss adding uh, radio buttons for all your options. You can always go ahead and um, add the, add additional ones manually. Now it won't add the, uh, the group name automatically, so you'll... Um, no, it did add the group name automatically. Okay, so uh, if you have multiple groups on this document, it won't automatically add the group name, but because there's only one group so far, it, it does default to that. So there we go. But if it, if it wasn't, you could just choose it from this dropdown. I am unaffiliated with you. Okay, very good. So now we have recreated those radio buttons and there will be a couple additional options to set. So let's double click on them and open it up. Specifically, it uh, doesn't have a tooltip. The tooltip is directly tied to the name, and because we only have one name for all three of these items, they all have the same group name, it'll have the same tooltip for each of them. And the tooltip will be the question, which is select UO affiliation. And then say required. And if I click between them, I'll see that the tooltip is automatically added to all of these. Oh, and if you wanted to actually edit the uh, value for this particular option that is under the options tab under the radio button choice and you can also change the style I think originally it was a square and it defaults to a circle when you create new ones I kind of like the square better so I'll go ahead and change that okay very good that does it for uh, radio buttons so the last items that I want to go over are checkboxes. Checkboxes, they're kind of between the text input fields and radio buttons and how they behave. They do not belong to a group. So the most important thing to remember when working with checkboxes is that the tooltip, it needs to define both the question and the value of that particular checkbox. So I'll call this football and then the tooltip will need to say let's see I want to receive updates for football so it refers to both the question and and the value of this particular checkbox You may recall when I started this video, I said the reason I only had four sports here was because it would get redundant. 
and you probably understand that better now. Okay, very good. So that is it for the check boxes. Actually, no, it's not. There's also the, uh, the confirm option. So I will call this confirm, and then this isn't like a legally binding thing, right? But because when you submit this form, you are uh, consenting to have your athletics send you emails, I think it's probably uh, best practice to make sure the tooltip, what the screen reader reads, be verbatim with what's actually visible on the screen. I confirm that I want to receive promotional emails from UO. Athletics, I understand that I can unsubscribe at any time and then say required and then flag it as required. Okay, very good. And we're done. That's all I wanted to show you about creating form fields. Well, no, it's not. That's all for, for creating the initial form fields. The next step is to verify the uh, the tab order of, of these form fields. And if you've watched the previous videos and learned about logical reading order, tab order is almost exactly the same thing. When you work on forms, many people use the tab key to just jump from one form field to the next. And we need to make sure it's in a logical reading order. Generally, that's left to right, top to bottom. Um, and you can see the tab order in this sidebar here. So you'll see it reads date of birth, street address, phone, city, state, zip. And if you follow along in the form, date of birth, street address, phone, city, state, zip, that looks mostly correct. And that's because when Acrobat's prepare form tool runs, it it, it sets it up for you in the order that it, it finds these on the document. So it does a pretty good job. However, if you delete and then create new fields, it will automatically stick it at the very bottom of this list. So I deleted and recreated the name field. So it's not an order. It's all the way down here. So let's just go ahead and drag it to where it belongs in the tree, which is actually at the uh, very top. And now it's an order. A perhaps easier way of visualizing this is if you open up the hamburger menu, the three horizontal lines, and choose show tab numbers, it will add these little numbers in the corner so you can actually see this is first this is second this is third so that's an easier visualization four five six seven eight um oh 14 uh 9 10 11 12 13 so i forgot that i i recreated these so these are out of order so it would actually go from email then down to the individual sports then you confirm and then it jumps back up to the radio button so that's not right. So let's go ahead and move this. UO affiliation is between email address and football. And now we see it is updated. So that, that looks correct. The only other item um, that I might want to change for tab order is phone number. So in general, I said it's left or right, top to bottom, and that's that's correct. But most addresses, you'll fill them out as street address, then city, state, zip. So adding phone number in here, I think it could be a little bit confusing, especially if you can't actually see this form, you're, you're going by um, you know, a screen reader reading it out. I wouldn't expect to see phone number in here. It might make more sense if phone number was grouped next to email address. So I will move phone number down uh, after zip code and before email. So now it reads street address, city, state, zip, then phone, then email. So logical reading order, uh, not hard and fast rules, just make sure it's logical. And that is uh, all that I want to show you for this video. The only other major component of accessible forms in PDFs is tagging. I'm not going to tag this entire document in a recorded video because a lot of it is redundant with what you've seen elsewhere, but tagging PDFs does have its own nuances, so I will upload an additional short video showing you how to manage the tags for these forms. So thank you for watching, and I will see you in that next video.